artistically, socially and culturally, and Christian Andersen was a mouthbreaker. In his autobiography, The Fairy Tale of My Life, he described himself as a bog plant, a plant that had its roots deeply anchored in mire and mud, but with reached up, stretching for the light and the sun. This self-image captures both the striving and the tension between poles which characterize Hans Christian Andersen's life and which are the great, great strengths of his art. Hans Christian Andersen, the Bach plant, reached up for the light in art and art in life. He was born in Odense in 1805 and grew up in extremely straightened circumstances. This background, these roots in the mud, he never forgot. But via art and his artistic activities, he thought to rise up to the light. Socially speaking, he moved from being a poor working class lad to a world famous artist. But he never felt himself warmed by the rays of the sun or of fame. He never felt he had completely achieved his goal. The roots in the mire were too strong, yet at the same time, it was through them that he absorbed the special nourishment and sisterly kept him striving up towards the light, and that characteristically filled his art with images and formulations that break with tradition. Imagination, poetry, love, and the Christian faith were the Bach plant's traveling companions towards the light. In most places in Andersen's work, particular in his fairy tales and stories, he portrays opposites and transitions. His art contains innovations of genre, just as his social life and cultural experiences contain considerable breakings of existing mouths. Hans Christian Andersen fell in love with several women during his life, but was obliged to shift his own longings for love over into his art and into the fairy tales he wrote. He not only broke existent patterns, he also transposed everyday life and experiences into art because he was never able to find inner rest in outer reality. He was highly enthusiastic about modern technology and lived in an age when the forces of the steam engine and electromagnetism were being harnessed and when telegraphy brought the world together in a new way. Hans Christian Andersen traveled in a Europe that was getting ready to become modern. This Andersen registers with both delight and fear in his writing. This is also registered in the form of artistic reflections on time, place and distance. When Hans Christian Andersen said, to travel is to live, he was not only referring to outer journeys, but to traveling as a form of existence. He was a restless person, an asserting artist, who did not settle down or create one home for himself. He had many homes, for home was the artistic universe and the journey itself, one could say. He traveled all over Europe, time and time again, something that is reflected in his novels, travel accounts, fairy tales and stories, as a treasure true of localities. Hans Christian Andersen visitors count kings and artists, locations and landscapes, because he was full of an insatiable thirst of experiences and a restless longing for the inner balance he probably found in his art, but never wholly in his life. Hans Christian Andersen wished to be acknowledged. The Bach plant longed for and stretched up towards the light. He never managed to feel that he had gained complete recognition and fame. He rose up, became famous and admired, wealthy, but he never felt he had arrived at the point 
where he could feel independent and at peace there.